Previously, I discussed a branch of philosophy that put emphasis on historical and social change as the main motivating factors for human actions. For example, philosophers like Hegel, Marx, and Sartre argued that we are the product of history, either society's history or our own personal history. In this segment, I'll focus on the other branch of philosophy that is based on the individual human psyche or the blind will that drives human actions. In other words, it's not the history or society, but other mysterious forces inside us like passion or the blind subconscious will. The German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, who lived between 1788 and 1860, was firmly against Hegel's philosophy. Schopenhauer took Kant's distinction between the knowable world of phenomena and the unknowable world of noumena to develop his own theory of will and representation. Schopenhauer argued that there is no distinction between the two. They are one and the same thing, or two sides of the same coin. He said there is one world, which he called will. But this will is mysterious and hard to understand. It's built in inside us. In other words, all living beings and even non-living beings come pre-assembled or pre-installed with this blind will. Since it's built in inside each being, we cannot fully know. We can only know how it's represented or manifested to us, but not the will itself. The will itself is hidden from us. All we see is its mere representation. For Schopenhauer, will is the blind driving force in the universe, and representation is our perception of that blind will. In other words, will is the essence of the universe, and we only see or understand its manifestation in us. He called it will to life, or passion for life, that we share with all living beings, including animals and plants. We all have an innate will to continue living. Since the will itself is blind and universal, we each become its eye through which it looks out to the world. Will is like a gigantic iceberg, while our human intellect or human perception of it is only the tip of that iceberg. So Schopenhauer really went deeply psychological about human motivation. Schopenhauer says it's impossible to know the will, because as soon as you observe it, it becomes a representation of that will. If you do not observe it, then it is the will. It's like in quantum mechanics, your observation of a particle changes the position of the particle. In other words, if you don't look, it is there, but as soon as you look, it changes position. It's also a kind of catch-22. To understand Schopenhauer's idea of will is to imagine everything in the universe as one thing, let's say atoms that oscillates between everything that exists. It appears to us as something that is not a genuine thing, but a mere representation. To fully understand Schopenhauer's will, it's important to mention the Buddhist idea of the self as an illusion or a mirage. For the Buddhists, soul is universal, but the self is a mere mirage we acquire in our lifetime. In other words, our essence is not the self we call me or I. Schopenhauer too places the blind will at a much deeper place than we understand or we can get to and will only get a representation of it. He also said that will is the cause of our human suffering. Therefore, Schopenhauer is often considered the father of pessimism. Just like in Buddhism, our ego desires things, and those desires makes us suffer because we can never satisfy our desires fully. Schopenhauer says, since we have a body, we have a will that somehow controls us, and that causes us suffering. So we are all at the mercy of this blind will that urges us to do things. The only way to cope with this suffering is through intellect and art, which allows us to move to a state of non-existence like in Buddhist nirvana. Artists, while creating art, as well as us while enjoying that art, we all experience a moment of non-being while in awe of its beauty. When an art takes our breath away, we truly experience non-existence, a kind of blissful moment. Schopenhauer influenced the German composer Richard Wagner, whose music represents Schopenhauer's philosophy. For Schopenhauer, music didn't represent the phenomenal world, therefore it was free from the will and urges, instead it fostered compassion. Schopenhauer had a massive influence on novelists and musicians of the 19th century. He also influenced psychoanalysts, especially Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Schopenhauer also dismissed the idea of God and replaced God with the blind will, and this had an influence on our next philosopher. The Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard lived between 1813 and 1855. 
He argued that our anxiety comes from our choices, or in other words, our belief and complete freedom to make choices. In a world where everyone believes in God, where everything is caused by God, people accept it because there is no other choice. In other words, God tells you what to do and what not to do. You have no choice of your own. But we live in a world where we no longer believe in God, so we have the freedom to choose. But this freedom comes at a massive psychological cost. It makes us anxious about our choices and the consequences of our choices. When we are children, we live a carefree life because our parents take care of everything. In the same way, a God-fearing society also lives in a kind of blissful ignorance. Since God is dead, or when parents die, we are responsible to make our own choices. The psychological toll of making choices is immense on us. For example, Hamlet agonizes over the question of to be or not to be in Shakespeare's play. Incidentally, Hamlet was also a Dane like Kierkegaard. In the 19th century, hysteria was very prevalent, especially among women. Today, anxiety is more common among both men and women. So absolute freedom makes us anxious. Kierkegaard himself never lost faith in God, but he saw freedom as good and bad. While it makes us anxious and dizzy, it also allows us to make good moral choices. His problem with Hegel's theory of history was that it gave little room for individual freedom because we are bound by the historical force. In fact, we suffer not because of the bigger forces in society, but we suffer through our own action or choices we make as individuals. So Schopenhauer said the blind will motivate us while leaving us with minimum freedom of our own, and Kierkegaard said that little freedom induces anxiety in us. Now these two philosophers come together in our next philosopher. The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche lived between 1844 and 1900. He was a great admirer of Schopenhauer. He accepted Schopenhauer's idea of the will, but he had a big problem how passive this will to life was. Nietzsche argued that this will, blind it may be, can be harnessed and utilized for great purposes, artistic genius and philosophical flourishing. He changed the passive will to life into a proactive will to power. In other words, we're not here just to live, but we're here to grow, conquer, and dominate. Nature is based on competition, not a state of blissfulness or mere survival. Nietzsche saw religion, especially its morality, as the biggest obstacle for individuals to push boundaries in order to achieve greatness. Morality decides what's good, what's bad, so society promotes certain values and restricts others. Nietzsche saw this as a weak-minded way of living that promoted weak or slave mentality. He instead proposed a more nature-based approach in which no morality can restrict innovation, probing artistic creativity and philosophical ideas. Nature wants to grow, dominate, while religions suppress and tame people. Nietzsche proposed the idea of Ubermensch, a being who has surpassed humanity into something else, a free spirit artist or a philosophical genius. He is no longer bound by social values and norms because he has shed his human qualities of weakness, enslaved mentality, and religious compassion. He is released from all that into an enormous creative energy and exuberance for life. Nietzsche also saw Western philosophy championing rationality at the expense of passion and emotions. For him, passion was as important as reason. Reason is just a tool, it provides us with technology that makes life easier and more comfortable. But reason cannot motivate us to do things that are daring and courageous. Instead, rationality makes us risk averse. This timidness leads us to a hedonism in which we only seek pleasure and avoid pain. This is a kind of nihilistic self-indulgence that makes you lazy and self-centered. Human passion, on the other hand, motivates us to do things, conquer the world, and topple mountains. So Nietzsche's philosophy was based on human passion, or the will to power, to surpass the current humans into great genius. Nietzsche didn't believe in equality either, because only a handful of people could become great artists and genius philosophers. Not everyone has original ideas. So to sum up, Schopenhauer placed human motivation on the blind, innate will, while Kierkegaard said our anxiety comes from the little freedom we experience, and Nietzsche argued we're driven by will to power, or passion to push society forward and innovate. Today, sociology and psychology have replaced philosophy when it comes to human motivation. 
One of the leading voices of psychology is Jordan Peterson, who was born in 1962 and has adopted YouTube as his platform. Another contemporary voice is the Indian yogi Sadhguru. Peterson believes in human passion and faith, telling young people to take individual responsibility. Unlike Zizek, Peterson doesn't see the world through group identity like class or gender, but through the lens of the individual. His idea of perception is somewhat similar to Schopenhauer's will and representation. Sadhguru, an Indian yogic guru on the other hand, argues that today's world is shaped by materialism and people have conflated the desire for more with happiness. Our goal is no longer happiness, but to have more. He argues it's time we reach a higher level of intelligence so we are in charge of our body, not our bodily desires in charge of our mind. He argues that modern society, even science, has become a slave to human bodily desires to make us more comfortable. As a result, it has blinded us from other possibilities of human intelligence or human consciousness to reach higher places. So to sum up, Schopenhauer said we are driven by a universal will or passion for which we have no control and this causes us to suffer. And art is our best cure for suffering. Kierkegaard argued that our anxiety or suffering is also caused by our freedom of choices in life, which kind of negates Schopenhauer's blind will. Nietzsche said this human passion that causes us suffering is also a great tool to do something, create something and become greater than ourselves. Peterson says to ease suffering is to take responsibility and make something of your individual life instead of blaming others. Sadhguru argues for a new form of human consciousness that goes beyond the material world. So to sum up, human philosophy in the last 2500 years has tried to answer many different questions. Early Greeks tried empirical knowledge to explain the world, while early Eastern philosophers tried to psychologically cope with the problem of existence. Then later philosophers tried to explain life's purpose, with the humanists focusing on the equality among humans, while the elitists or political realists emphasized competition to push society forward. Then Kant brought rationalism and empiricism together and the next generation of Germans took him in two separate directions. Hegel went historical saying we are made by history while Schopenhauer went deeper into human psyche saying we are made by a blind will. Perhaps today we are moving towards a new philosophy that is not based on reason but human intuition.